Hello and welcome to another episode of Stroke Rounds. Today in this session we will review few points on watershed in Fox. Let's first see a case. This could be a typical case for many of you. A patient presenting with syncope, hypotension and progressive weakness and you find out an anterior watershed infarct, a posterior watershed infarct and a paramedian watershed infarct. Many of you might be thinking, yes I got the diagnosis, this is case of carotid stenosis. But surprisingly, this patient had normal carotid, no occlusion, no stenosis. So what could have caused this? Let's see. So what are watershed areas? They are those areas that receive dual blood supply from the branching ends of two large arteries. This is a watershed area, this is a watershed area and this one is another one. It is divided into two. One is the external and another is internal. So what are watershed infarcts? These are infarcts that occur at these characteristic locations. How common are they? Almost 10% of all infarcts are watershed infarcts. We'll review once more the blood supply of brain. There are two main arterial supplies. One is a basal perforatus and another is a pile plexus. The pile plexus divides into three. One is the intracortical arteries, the subcortical arteries which supply the cortex and the subcortical U fibers and the medullary arteries which supply exclusively the white matter. The basal perforatus, they supply the deep basal ganglia structures. So there is an area of watershed zone which lies between the supply of these two group of arteries. So what are areas of misery perfusion? They are areas that lie at the junction of these two different drainage areas. So once there is repeated episodes of severe hypotension, which will lead to chronic autoregulation failure, it could either be due to an ICAT or an ECAT, these areas develops. These areas are actually highly susceptible to infarcts. We will review the classification once more. So the external watershed infarcts are divided into three, the frontal one, the occipital one and the paramedian one. A few points on internal watershed infarcts which we will review in the next session. Internal watershed infarcts are between the lenticulostriate artery and the MCA, the medial lenticulostriate arteries and the ACA, the anterior choroidal and the MCA, the anterior choroidal and the PCA and between Huebner's and anterior cerebral artery. In this session we will review only on external watershed infarcts. A few more images is anterior watershed cortical watershed infarct, posterior cortical watershed infarct. This is a mixed variant. So, what has the change in the pathophysiology of border zone infarcts? Previously it was thought only due to hypoperfusion, due to a stenosis or an occlusion. But now, a new concept of microemboli has come in. These microemboli, either from heart or from arteries, they preferentially propagate and get lodged in the watershed areas. Since these areas have poor perfusion, they have poor clearance. These will produce infarcts. And since this is an embolic event, usually they have concomitant smaller cortical infarcts. Since they are closer to the cortex, there is a high chance of developing collateral supply through leptomeningeal or dural anastomosis. So they have usually because of these collaterals, benign clinical cause and a better prognosis. Among external cortical watershed infarcts, the anterior one is the most common. So how we can recognize it in an imaging, in an MR imaging? Usually they are wedge shaped or ovoid shaped and usually they are seen in the typical location but they can vary because of the development of leptomeningeal collaterals. So what are the stay home messages? There are three types of external watershed infarcts. Isolated cortical watershed infarcts may be an embolic. So usually you have to look for an embolic source and less frequently they are associated with hemodynamic compromise alone. Don't get surprised by normal carotids in that. They have a good prognosis usually. So stay calm. 
Thank you for listening. Please leave your comments in the comment sections below. Thank you.